Oh man, what a piece of garbage YouTube is. I just had this whole video almost uploaded and the video and the, and the freaking upload canceled out on me. Unbelievable. But since I'm on this roll, uh, looking at this MF Global stuff from yesterday, I did a video yesterday. Here's a great, uh, there's a great article. And I was kind of hinting at that yesterday with my video title. I was like, they did this on purpose. This wasn't like, uh, oh my gosh, we got up one morning and uh, MF Global, you know, oh, we discovered that we had problems. Oh, this was done on purpose by this rat, John Corzine, and his uh, handlers at the Fed. It's exactly what happened. And, you know, as I was re-uploading YouTube here, I see that somebody uploaded my video from yesterday, which was nice and everything. But then I see one of my buddies from going way back. He comments on the video going like, oh, yeah, Dave. Well, he's all right, you know. But all he ever did was ever read from, from freaking Zero Hedge and read articles from it. I mean, you know, I don't know. The, the the internet is just, what a joke. You know, and people, your old buddies and stuff, you know. And then you see something they write behind your back, and it's like, oh, yeah, him, yeah, he's all right, guy. Well, you know, my one of my good buddies from long ago. I'm like, man, whatever. You know, yeah, that's all I ever did was just read articles. I never had any videos that were just my opinion on stuff, you know. I got what, like almost 400 videos and at least half of them are just me with opinions on stuff. But you know what those videos do is people say, well, what are you talking about? You don't have any links up. So then you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Crazy. Man, unreal. You know, damned if you do, if you damn it. You know, if you, if you provide a bunch of links and stuff, oh, well, that's, oh, well, anybody, everybody already knew that. Well, what happened here on, um, who was the, who was the guy here on YouTube? And all around the internet over the last couple months who was uploading all these videos saying yeah they want you just to believe that they're doing this qe3 thing but they ain't gonna do it who was that i don't know i can't remember anyway um yeah here's this article this is great um guest post mf global was it a hit and this is by uh, lawrence leopard down, I don't know who he is, but further down in the article, he says he lost about a hundred thousand bucks in MF Global too. So apparently he's a commodities trader, or whatever. But he writes a very interesting article here. I'll read. I'll read through it quick. Um, okay, imagine you are Ben Bernanke, or on the board of governors of the Federal Reserve. The time frame is July and August of 2011, and the price of gold is on a tear. Commodities inflation has been persistent and is breaking out everywhere. Your, pre your prediction that inflation is contained and is a temporary phenomena are beginning to look observed. absurd. So what do you do? Simple. Hint that QE3, the primary driver of inflation, is coming and then fail to deliver at the September FM FOMC meeting. Gee, who said, who said that that was going to happen before it did? Um, that takes care of the price of gold and the gold stocks. Ah, but those pesky commodity speculators keep making money and trading against what you want the markets to do. So what is to be done there? Hey, John Corzine, how about you tank the largest broker for the small commodities in the world, uh, uh, small commodities traders in the world, and we let them twist in the wind? That will serve them right. Teach them to bet against the government approved scenario. Think it did not happen? Well, think again. All the pieces fit. It sure is convenient that all these commodity speculators are now out of the box. Also, who will want to speculate on commodities in the future, given customer funds are no longer protected? Furthermore, commodity speculators are not a very all-American group from the authorities' point of view. They can say, screw them. Who will feel the sympathy? Hell, James Bullard, the Fed governor, in an interview on CNBC yesterday, said the MF Global collapse proves that the system works. Well, yeah, it does, Jim, for you. Personally, I have $90,000 at MF Global and would like to have my honestly earned money returned. Unfortunately, the odds, odds of that happening are anytime soon uh, seem slim, in part because MF Global entered bankruptcy. The judge appointed a trustee whose law firm has done substantial work for J.P. Morgan, 
a deeply interested party. Well, how's J.P. Morgan an interested, a very interested party in this? Well, you go back early this, early in this when this story first broke. It was apparently it was Jamie Dimon who said, "Oh wow, well I was, I was looking at something here early one morning at three o'clock in the morning, and I found that there's a problem with MF Global." Right, and he says that's how it started. Well, a few days later, out comes Jamie Dimon that says, "Oh well, we figured out that this money, we found it. Oh, well, it's here at J.P. Morgan." Okay, so that whole thing's just bizarre. Nobody's been able to explain that or even bring it up since, but I remember that stuff. Believe me. Uh, so J.P. Morgan's a deeply interested party. Okay, we we will probably never find out what happened here, but for those. Uh, but those with, uh, of us who, with uh, eyes that are open, the results speak for themselves. The whole news stinks to high heaven. I'm with Gerald Salente. If the largest commodity broker in America could go bankrupt and nothing is done, then where can you put your money and expect it to be safe? I, for one, do not expect. Oh, I, for one, do not accept that John Corzine is stupid enough to lever up J, uh, MF Global 40 to 1 and use the proceeds and customer money to bet, bet on the Euro sovereign debt. This was a hit, pure and simple. That is why there is no resolution to the problem. And it's just another example of the deeply corrupt U.S. political financial axis. It may take money away from a bunch of commodity speculators, and it may cool down the perceived inflation, but it is just another hole in the dike, which is the U.S. financial system. Dyke whose life can probably now be measured in months, not years. Well, nobody's trusting this system anymore. The, uh, there was another article over on Zero Hedge today saying how that they're chasing everybody out of the markets. I mean, you know, this is an end game. There now, no, nobody has any trust in the in the uh, financial and in Wall Street and the financial system. I mean, who's going to put their money into this in in big amounts? The only people with money still in there are these 401k people. Everybody else is now saying, even if you go into markets, and even if you manage to make something, your money's completely unsafe. It's probably just going to be, it's probably just going to vanish. It's totally unsafe. It's like, uh, you know, I mean, it's like the Wild West out in the markets. Put some money in there, and you're just going to get your, you're just going to get robbed. Like a stagecoach, Butch Cassidy and Sundance kids out, kid out there, just robbing you, and nobody does anything. I can't believe it in this country. You know, I was saying a long, long time ago here on YouTube that these people, these traders, these honest bankers, honest traders, and and whatever, they better get together and get a handle on this. So I was, that's what I was saying a long time ago. Now they're all just like, oh shoot, oh, oh, I guess all our money's just gone. Oh well. When yesterday, I think I put up the link to that one. Yeah, I, do, I did a video on that yesterday, the one that closed down. I said, we're not de we're not operating in this environment anymore. Now, what else can you say? You know, hey, if you got money in there, be careful. Hope you can get it out in time. Anyway, thanks for listening, and I'm going to cut this short and upload it and everything. Thanks. Bye.